Hello guys, um, I would like to thank God for my life and for bringing me this far, even as a traveler. I know the job is not easy, but travelers risk their lives mostly just to create content that promotes beauty of Africa to the world. But in doing this, we face some challenges along the way. I would love to talk about what I just experienced a few days ago. I have never really experienced that before. But I think out of the numerous people visiting Onicha, about 55% of them have experienced the same thing or even more. The story I'm about to narrate to you happened to me and my colleague a few days ago in Onicha on our first time visit to Onicha while shooting a video. I hope the government takes a good look into this as soon as possible because people are complaining bitterly. It was about 10.45 am we left Oka, Anambra State and arrived on Icha at about 12.20 pm. So we decided to hire a minibus to take us to places. But before, I had already told some of my friends and families that I was having a shoot in Onicha and they all said the same thing that Onicha is not a good place that I should go with security or someone who knows the area very well. Everyone I called said the same thing and they kept on calling to know how far I have gone with the plan. So a friend of mine directed me to someone that could show us around the city. After we hired a minibus from the park, it took us about an hour to locate him because there was much hold up at the Onicha head bridge. When we finally got to him, we decided to go see the second bridge first and get a drone shot of it before heading to the next location. Onicha is a very busy area and everybody is just rushing to somewhere. Cars are scratching each other just to find a way to maneuver the holder. Security personnel are always looking for people at fault. Market men and women trying to find their way through and also thieves searching for the next victim. We got to the roundabout leading to a second break and we decided to take the drone shot and nothing bad happened. It was time to drive to the second Niger beach, which we did, and I was very impressed of the development which I saw. It was as if we could just cross over to Asaba, which we didn't. While heading back to Onicha city, the driver took a turn at Uwiri Road. Now, we had no information about this road, and everyone in the bus was happy. We had accomplished our first goal for the day and was heading to the next location. While in Uwiri Road in Onicha, cars ahead of us were moving slowly because there were potholes in this road. All of a sudden, someone appeared and was acting as if he was trying to help us to get out of the potholes. When all of a sudden, he jumped into the bus and said that he was tax force that why was he driving in this area that the driver should settle him immediately before he calls his boys to come and join this bus all of a sudden he pulled out a sharp knife at the back of my seat since i was sitting in the front and he had a gun hiding under his shirt which he asked us not to create a scene. The driver became scared and asked if I had some money with me so he could settle in. Before this was happening, I had started packing my drone into my bag so I think he didn't notice about it. The driver begged him we had only 3000 naira and he became angry and asked to bring more money. So I thought he was just a tax agent who wanted to collect charges and I turned back and wanted to speak back at him when he asked me if I wanted to die and the driver begged me to keep quiet and started begging him. While this was happening, we were parked along the road and people were just passing and nobody was asking questions. He pointed at a spoiled tricycle in front of us and said he just killed the driver because he refused to give him money and was rushed to the hospital just now and he was willing to do the same if we don't give him money. Already, the lady I was with, a fellow YouTuber, was at the back seat with the other guy who was showing us around on each other. And they were the ones seeing everything happening from the back. And I saw the tension in their faces. This was when I realized that the game had changed. I had to dip my hands and give them 3,000 naira. He asked us to add 
2000 naira, which I did later and asked me for another 1000 naira again. Now, we all had our phones with us, and the most expensive thing I was carrying was my drone at that moment. While the thief was talking, he surprisingly said we should hide our phones and started asking us if we know how many people he has killed. We did not respond and he went on talking. This was getting to about 20 minutes and we were still at the same spot. When all of a sudden, he grabbed my colleague's power bank, opened the door and left the bus and we drove off as fast as we could. We were shocked at what happened. We were shocked about what happened. I lost 6,000 naira. My colleague lost her power bank, which she bought for about 25,000 naira, but we still had our phones, camera, and drone with us. I asked myself, why didn't he take our phones from us when he knew we had them on and he could take them from us since he had a weapon? I had plans on going around on each other to shoot some other interesting videos, but I was not in for it anymore after what I just experienced. Many things came passing through my mind and all I think was it's God telling us not to continue with the shoot here in Onichan. What if God had wanted to delay us at that point to save us from the dangers ahead? This was the main purpose why I had to go back to the park where we complained to other drivers there. They had to start questioning the driver that took us there. We later took a bus heading back to Oka and all I did while thinking was thanking God we only lost money and a power bank. Ever since that day, I became scared of Onicha. People who told me that I was lucky enough that we were not driven down somewhere where they can collect all our belongings. Someone even told me that when there is mostly hold up in Onicha, most thieves start robbing along the road. I wonder how some dangerous people walk about on each other freely and people are still surviving and this is happening almost every day. I have nothing bad about Anambra State. I only think it's high time they wipe out all the thoughts in Onicha because it's really creating a bad name for Anambra State and the good work of its government. Please, before you visit Onicha, make the right contacts make the best moves and be very careful of your valuables because Onisha is not safe for any newcomer. You have to be a strong-minded person for you to be able to stay in Onisha as everybody there is a hustler. It won't be fair if I leave here without dropping some clips of the second Niger bridge. And man, this project is beautiful. Enjoy every bit of it. Don't forget to subscribe. God bless you.
splashing around upstream on a hot day. I love the way that you look at me like there is no tomorrow when I'm caught up in a movie scene of dread. But now is the only time I know for us to get ahead by being still and moving slow and holding on instead. Just don't think it'll be the same ever again. So can we just stay right here? Don't go too fast for what we've got. So much to say in all kinds of ways. Don't go too fast for what we let's press through. See what we Still and 